Morning all. Now today I'm going to be uh, testing this Ultra Fire lithium ion rechargeable battery, 4250 milliamp hours, high capacity without memory effect, precise digital protection circuit built in. Warning, do not disassemble, dispose in fire, heat or short circuit, blah 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 blah. So 3.7 volt lithium ion, it's an 18650 cell with tabs. I thought I'd get the tabbed version. So here's the eBay listing, two rechargeable 18650 lithium ion batteries. Uh, and they were fairly expensive because they're tabbed. Tabbed are quite unusual, £5.45 for two though. Uh, and they're from Synergy. Now, all I'm planning to do in this video is to test the precise digital protection circuit. And in the listing at the bottom there, it says with integrated PCB protection, internal PCB protection prevents under voltage at two and a half volts and over voltage at 4.25 volts. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to use the dumbest of dumb loads, which is this. Uh, 6 volt light bulb. I'm just going to solder it directly to the two tabs there and allow the battery to discharge. And in order to uh, see the protection circuit kick in, I need some sort of data logger. Now I don't have a data logger, but I reckon if I put my scope on a very slow scan setting, I'll be able to watch the voltage of the battery drop down as the bulb discharges it and then suddenly drop to zero volts when the protection circuit kicks in. So here's the uh, lithium battery with the bulb and on the scope we've got a trace that's starting to show a little bit of uh, decline. Now one volt per division would have given me an easier uh, way of uh, calculating but half a volt per division gives me a wider span on the screen. So the way this is set up, uh, this line here is three volts, so it's still above three volts. This here will be two volts, so it should cut out just above that line somewhere. So the light's still on, and it's just approaching the end of the first screen, so that's about 16 minutes. Um, it's well below 3 volts, but not anywhere near 2.5 volts yet, so we'll just leave it running. So we're about halfway through the second sweep now, and the voltage has dropped to about 2.6 volts. Let's just point that out. Um, this line here, the dotted line, is 2.5. This is 2.6, 2.7, and so on. So at about 2.6 volts. And the lamp is still running. Right, it's just starting to get very close to the 2.5 volt line there. And I've raised the lamp up and the battery up so that it's reflected in the screen. So I'll just uh, hold it here for a minute and see whether we can actually catch the cutoff on camera. Right, so we're down to about 2.2 volts now, heading quite rapidly for 2.1 volts. And the protection circuit still hasn't kicked in. Interesting. So the voltage is now down to 2 volts. And uh, still nothing from the precise digital protection circuit. And I'm starting to get a little bit cynical. Under 2 volts now. So we're down to below 1.5 volts now. Um, yeah, 1, 1 1.5, that's it. Rapidly dropping to 1 volt. And the lamp is still lit. You can see uh, dim. But there's still a glow from the filament. So the uh, precise digital protection circuit still hasn't kicked in and I'm beginning to think it probably won't. 
So just about to lose the uh, faint glow in the filament of the light bulb there. And the battery voltage is down to, uh, what's that, that's 0.75 volts, about 0.7 now. It's dropping very rapidly. So it would appear that uh, I've been conned. No precise digital protection circuit in this battery. Heading down to half a volt. So there's the trace uh, emerging from the left hand side. Well under half a volt now. Under 0.4 heading for 0.3. So no digital protection circuit. I think it's going to be necessary to take this battery apart. So I've uh, pulled the tabs off this ultrafire battery and now I'm going to take the covering off. So inside under all this sticky wrapping stuff we just have a cylindrical cell, uh, no markings on there at all, a funny sort of um, bit on the top and an insulating washer which is stuck on um, but fairly obviously there's no uh, protection circuit board in this cell so mm, I've been had. Now the question is this having been fully discharged can I charge it up again so I've stuck it in my little SoShine lithium-ion single cell charger um, and I've brought it outside because uh, if it all goes up in flames I don't really want uh, that to happen indoors and uh, at the moment the cell's just stuck on 3.3 volts so I'm just going to leave it out here um, wait till it's had uh, I don't know an amp hour or so shoved into it and see what the voltage becomes so I must admit I wasn't really expecting to uh fall at the first hurdle with my lithium battery experiments but that certainly seems to be what's happened. It's interesting they're very different from nickel metal hydrides. With nickel metal hydrides you just buy a brand name like Sanyo Eneloop. In fact I only ever buy Sanyo Eneloops now. I did buy some rubbish Chinese ones initially but they didn't last and I just got caught in exactly the same way as I've been caught out with these lithiums. But the lithiums don't have Sanyo brand, Panasonic brand. Quite often you'll see listings with um, it says Sanyo inside or Panasonic inside and they charge more money for it but um, it seems that the the big brands don't want to put their names on these things and I suppose it's not surprising given their reputation but um, anyway that was my first attempt at uh, testing a lithium-ion battery and uh, I got caught out. And an update on the uh charging the attempt to recharge this cell um, well it is up to 3.9 volts but interestingly this charger is flashing poor cell that's ironic isn't it 